Jason here with a quick unboxing of Storm Over Stalingrad. Um, just got this in the mail. Had my eye on it. Back in the day, it kind of flew under the radar for a long time, and I thought, you know, while this thing is still able to be gotten, I'm going to get, uh, did just that. <clears throat> so I uh, thought I'd uh, share this with you guys, somewhat excited. This is uh, what I would consider diet wargaming or wargame light. It's not meant as an offensive term. Just uh, so long as you know what you're getting into ahead of time, and I do, this is nothing overly complex. Uh, in fact, it uh, would be a great introductory war game in my opinion. The back of the box <clears throat> with a uh, depiction of, or a synopsis rather, of Stalingrad. Low complexity, high solitaire suitability. What else do you need to know? International Gamer Series. M&P, enough said. Let's bust into this thing and see what we got. So we have one micro-thin rule book, seven whopping pages of rules, everything you need to know to play, and I can only imagine that when I get done reading this thing, I will be able to uh, seamlessly make my way through the game with little to no rules referencing. Kind of just like riding a couch down the highway and uh... what else do you need to know? Tatsuya Nakamura great game designer developers Adam Starkweather whom we should all be familiar with if we aren't by now you better ask somebody graphic artist Nico Escubi I've started to recognize that name more and more and uh... like what I see so what do you... what else do you get? you got uh... <coughs> This guy, and I can only imagine that 100 years from now, we'll be fighting tooth and nail on eBay over these as collector's items. You laugh now, but trust me, everything's collectible. A couple of these guys, not sure what they are, but I'm sure it'll explain it in the rule book. Some sort of square, white, plastic dice with some sort of uh, information on each side. I've noticed that uh, now on this die, each, each side is different, as well as... Okay, I'll stop. This is the cards. <clears throat> Haven't opened them yet. Not a, the biggest fan of uh, card-driven games, but uh, this isn't a card-driven game. It is a card-assisted game. So no complaints there. And then the counter sheet. And I should add, uh, this is uh, usual, utilizes the same system that was introduced in Storm over Arnhem, the area movement system. Kind of a boiled uh, down, watered down version. These are clean looking, these counters. No problems, no complaints. <clears throat> Look just fine to me. There's the back. <clears throat> what do you think? Not bad, huh? And then two separate maps that connect. Uh, due to the way I have filming configured at the moment, we'll only be able to show you a panel at a time of each map. And there's four panels <clears throat> on each map. And the colors aren't going to come through as well as they do in real life. Close, but not quite. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the color selection. It's somewhat drab or washed out. But I like it. I like it. I like the style of the map. Always interesting to uh, compare different Stalingrad mops, maps within uh, various games. There's that. number of styles. I think Turning Point Stalingrad has a great Stalingrad map as map. Why do I keep seeing map map as well? There you go. And finally, there you go. So I would uh, uh, recommend this to anybody that's just getting into wargaming or uh, again, want something light, something you can do on a lazy afternoon. Do not feel like you got to commit the next three months of your life and uh, bury your nose eight hours a day in the rule book and only have time to play via overtime. Now, not what this is. So, that was an unboxing of Stalingrad. I'm Jason. Thanks for watching.